everything definitely does revolve around the quality. Audio quality is at the beginning and the end of every song. A lot of people spend all of their time and effort, all of their learning, figuring out what to do in the middle, doing the production stage. But if you don't have good quality at the beginning, you're not gonna have good quality at the end. So no matter what you're doing, whether you're a musician, a producer, mixing engineer, anything that you're doing with audio, one of the most important things these days is video content. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. People are willing to put up with bad video quality, but they will not put up with bad audio quality. If someone can't understand what you're saying, they're going to click off the video almost instantly. So let's start with the microphone I use for recording on my video camera. So the lav mic I've been using for all of my content for the past few weeks is the X5 wireless lav mic from Fulane. They sent this over to me a few weeks ago and as soon as I started using it, I have not used any other microphone for my video since. It comes with its own charging case and two microphones along with one receiver. The charging case actually holds a charge itself, so it can actually charge both the microphones and the receiver, which is amazing for when you're on the go or when you're traveling. So each of the microphones have inbuilt noise cancelling, which is amazing for when you're outside recording in busy environments. It cuts out a lot of the background noise, reduces it and keeps the voice nice and clear. So what I love about using lav mics is that all I need to do is clip it somewhere onto my body and then I can just record anything, not have to worry about the microphone or whether there's too much wind, whether I'm too far away from the camera. I can go outside, I can go into the city, in the street recording. I can record from anywhere I want without having to worry about anything other than the content that I'm creating. Each microphone comes with its own windscreen which is awesome if you're outside or in windy environments. The microphones also come with this awesome little attachment that actually connects the microphone directly to your phone, which is really helpful for content creators that just use their mobile to create quick shorts and reels and things like that. Having two microphones is also amazing for when you're doing content with other people. If you've got a friend in your studio or if you're doing a collaboration with someone or just want to have someone else talking in your videos, you have two microphones, which makes that super easy to do. Ever since I've been using these microphones, it's been so much easier recording my video content. I can just plug the microphone straight on my jacket and then record without having to worry about anything else. So the next big one to talk about is the actual environment that you're in. Recording and microphones are always the start of the process and the environment you're in has a massive effect on those two things. If you've got too much echo or reverb in the environment or the room around you, that's all gonna come straight into the microphone and be very difficult to remove afterwards. That's why I have acoustic treatment on all of the walls in here and the ceiling. The other thing that you need to be careful of, depending on the environment you're in, is when you're recording, you can actually get resonances with certain frequencies, which can be very difficult to correct with EQ afterwards. You can actually get like a portable microphone booth that basically wraps around your microphone and it's literally just foam absorbers that will absorb anything that you're saying and stop any reflections from the room coming back into the back or sides of the microphone. Speaking of microphones, the microphone I use for field recordings and recording pretty much anything else is the Zoom H1N which is a tiny little recorder that I can literally put in my pocket and take anywhere with me. It records better than what a phone would record. So that's why I like using it. I do a lot of videos that you may have seen on my channel where I'll record random sounds from the environment or from somewhere that I'm traveling to and I'll turn those sounds into a song. So to be able to do that, it's really useful having a small recorder that can just fit in my pocket. I can pull out anywhere and get good quality audio. And the microphone I use for recording vocals is the Shure SM58. The reason why I use the SM58 is because I've used it so many times in live performances back when I used to play in bands that I know how to use it very well. I've used the SM58 for years, so I know exactly how to EQ it for my voice. I know how far away to hold it. I know what angles to hold it if I want different kind of sounds. There's obviously much better microphones than the SM58 if you want to spend more money. And that is going to be the next thing that 
has a huge impact on your audio quality. If you can get the best quality audio coming in, it's going to be way easier for you when you get to the mid stages of mixing, processing, sound design. And the other thing is that microphones are really dependent on the actual person using them. Depending on whether your voice is more high pitch or low pitch, what register your voice is in and the timbre of your voice, the sound and tone of your voice, you're going to have a different experience with every single microphone and you'll be able to find one that suits your voice perfectly. But to do that, you need to experiment and try different microphones. From your microphone, your audio then goes into your interface which is the next part of the chain. The audio interface I use is the Roland Quad Capture. It's the same one I've had for probably over 10 years. The only thing I really record through this is vocals. It's definitely not the best audio interface you can get. Something much higher quality like an interface from RME, for example, has way better preamps in it. And the preamps are what is going to be the biggest factor in the audio quality coming in. So as you know, the next section after the interface is bringing it into your computer. Everything you do from there is going to have a massive effect on the audio quality. Brands like Waves, Plugin Alliance, Brainworks, Sound Toys, and many others have different types of hardware emulations. If you're getting a hardware emulation of distortion, it's not just about the distortion, it's also about the kind of character that comes from the electronics inside the actual hardware. The different harmonics and saturation that comes from the entire hardware circuit can actually bring a lot of warmth into the sound. And that's why a lot of these hardware emulations exist. One plugin that I use on every single mix that I do is NLS by Wave. Nonlinear summing is specifically designed for actually creating those hardware artifacts that come from all of the analog gear and to give you that warm sound i put it on every single one of my buses just to give a little bit of analog character to the overall mix it's kind of one of those secret weapon plugins it can really make the difference to your music and it kind of steps your music up to another level of professionalism so i'm going to leave the link down in the description for that one if you guys want to head over you can grab the NLS plugin by Waves. So after your audio goes through the computer, that's where either your audio interface or digital analog converter comes in. All of my sound comes from my computer through to this thing back here. So this is the RME ADI2 Pro. And this is what I use to actually convert the signal from my computer into the audio that goes into the speakers. I'm specifically using this because it gives me the highest quality sound that I can get going into my LCDX headphones. This unit also has some digital signal processing built into it, which allows me to create a special EQ curve for both the headphones and for the speakers. It also has a headphone crossfeed function. So the headphone crossfeed function recreates the sense of space that you're going to feel through speakers, and it really helps to be able to understand what kind of stereo width you're going to have and create something that's a lot closer to that of speakers. Now in saying this, it can also be good to listen to your mix through bad quality speakers and a bad quality setup. A lot of people are going to be listening to your music in the car or on their phone or on their laptop. So listening to it through these things can actually help you to also understand how it's going to translate to these other devices and environments. And that is super important if you want your mix to sound good everywhere. From there, we have the speakers and the headphones that you're using. So the speakers I use are the Yamaha HS8 speakers along with the HS8S subwoofer. They're kind of a staple in home studios. They have a really flat frequency response for their price point. I've used them for a long time so I really understand how they're supposed to sound and what things are meant to sound like through them. Pairing them up with the sub means that I can really hear what's going on and I can feel what's going on in the bass, which is super important for my kind of music. They're definitely not the highest quality speakers and that's why I have the Audacy LCDX headphones. These headphones are incredible. They are definitely one of the best studio headphones you can buy. These are the headphones that I use to 
do all of my final mixing and mastering amazing detail and clarity and paired up with the RME ADI2 Pro I can hear all of the fine details it helps me to understand what's happening with the reverbs and the reverb tails it's like going from 1080p to 4k so the final piece of this whole process is the room itself the room is the final link between the speakers and your ears. If you're in a room with bare walls, you're going to get so much echo coming out of the speakers that it's gonna be very difficult for you to actually hear what's going on in your mix. You're hearing natural reverb from your room, so in your mix, you think you've got more reverb than you need, and you end up turning reverb down to the point where it's almost non-existent. That's where acoustic treatment comes in. Having some acoustic treatment in your studio will make a massive difference if you're listening through speakers. There's all different levels of acoustic treatment. You can go for anything between cheap foam padding to custom built acoustic panels. The first thing that you obviously need to do is treat the first reflection points. The first point of reflection where the sound will bounce off the walls back into your ear. So the sides of you, you've got above you on the roof, you have the wall directly behind the speakers and the wall directly behind you. So another massive thing with home studios, especially smaller ones, is the bass. So anything low end, you're going to get all kind of resonances. A lot of the time in home studios, low end is the biggest problem. So that's why we use bass traps. Bass traps are really thick panels that have loads of absorption. The thicker a panel is and the more material inside it, it's going to be able to absorb frequencies that are lower. And a lot of the time in small spaces, there's just not enough space. So this is why it can be better to sometimes have smaller speakers because then you don't have to deal with all of the issues that you're going to get from larger speakers that put out lower frequencies. So the way to actually set up acoustic treatment and figure out how much you need is basically a lot of experimentation. It all depends on the size of your room, the shape of the room, how high your ceiling is. Start by treating your first reflection points and then you can start experimenting. Try furniture, try putting panels in different spaces. And if you don't have the funds or the budget for panels, the next best thing you can do is fill the space with furniture. All kinds of things that are going to reflect and absorb sound will help and will make a massive difference to your home studio. So hopefully you guys were able to get something out of this video. Hopefully there was some helpful tips in there and some ideas that you can use for your own space or your own studio. And yeah, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching.